Welcome to Cash Flow Part 2. Here we're going to look into the working capital dynamics of cash flow because typically that is the most complex part of the cash flow analysis in a business. In the previous video, we went through these five sources of cash flow. And if you recall, source of cash number two, cash flow from working capital, involved a very simple example that I gave you around debtors. I want to explore this working capital cash flow in a little bit more detail and show you how it plays out in a business. So let's imagine that our small business is a supplier to one of these name brands. So of course Pick and Pay is a well-recognized retailer and Macro, Builders Warehouse and Game, all part of the MassMart group. And what's typical of these businesses is they take typically 90 days to pay their suppliers. So that is dependent on who you are as a supplier, how important you are to the business, how big you are, what sort of dominance you have in the market. But typically if we're a small medium enterprise, we might get paid on 90 days. So that, with that knowledge, let's have a look at some numbers here around a time period and we're going to follow this business for 12 months. So down the left hand side, I'm going to list the months and then we're going to look at the sales in the income statement, the amount of profit we make, the debtors in the balance sheet and some cash flow items as we progress in this business. So we're going to assume that we are selling to pick and pay and then month one we sell them a hundred thousand rands worth of goods and for the purpose of this example let's assume now that our profit that we make from the sales to pick and pay is forty thousand rand so at the end of the month we issue pick and pay with an invoice and of course they don't pay us cod so that goes into our debtors book as a hundred thousand rand so we don't receive any cash from our customer so we'll make that zero and i'm going to assume for the purposes of this exercise that the cash out is the sixty thousand rand the difference between a hundred thousand and forty thousand that we pay to our supplier for the raw materials that are used in the production process and therefore our cash balance is a negative 60,000. So I'm simplifying this example in a few ways. First of all, our cash out here is only the payments made to the supplier for the raw materials of the goods we produce. I don't have any overhead costs in there. I'm not paying out salaries and rent. I've excluded those from the example. The other thing I've done is I've assumed that this business is not VAT registered. And the reason why that's important is the income statement would reflect sales of 100,000, but if this business was VAT registered, the debtor's book would be 115,000, representing the 15% VAT rate in South Africa. So let's move on to month number two and we do another 100,000 rands worth of sales to our customer. We make this profit of 40,000 and therefore our debtors now increases to 200,000. We still haven't been paid by our customer, so our cash in is zero. And then we pay our suppliers, so we have a cash out. And now our cash balance is negative 120,000. So where would this cash out come from? Well, you would have to have some cash in the bank in order to do that or have access to a overdraft facility of some sort so that you can pay these supplies. And I'm assuming that we are paying these supplies cash on delivery. So what we're experiencing here is a little bit of pain in our cash flow as the cash gets lower and lower while we are waiting for our customer to pay us. So let's fast forward another month here. Our debtors book is growing, we still haven't been paid, we've paid our suppliers and our cash balance gets less and less. Now in month four, now that the 90 days has passed, notice that we get paid the 100,000 Rand from way back there in month one 
and our debtors book doesn't increase and the reason for that is we we start with a hundred thousand rand we increase it by the new invoice of a hundred thousand and then we reduce it by the amount that we've been paid so then during this month we've paid our suppliers sixty thousand but we've received forty thousand correction we've received a hundred thousand from our customers so the net inflow is 40,000 which is why our cash improves by 40,000 so that's a relief our customers are paying us and our cash is starting to return back towards a zero balance on our overdraft so if I fast forward another month we get paid from back here and our cash is improved by another 40,000 and if we move on to the next month now we start to notice how the impact of selling more to our customer. So pick and pay has said to us, right, we want 200,000 rands worth of goods. Your profit has increased, but at the same time, the debtor's book goes up. And now we pay double the amount to our supplier, represented by double the sales. And in a month where your profit has increased, your cash has declined. So we see this disconnect, profit going up, but cash going down. And that is primarily because our customers are taking long to a long time to pay us. Let's see what happens in month seven. 300,000 rands worth of goods, more profit, bigger debtor book, still only getting 100,000 rand in, having to pay the suppliers, worsening cash flow. The same happens in month eight, and the same happens in month nine as we increase these sales up to 500,000 rands. Our debtors book has swelled to 1.2 million. At least here we get this 200,000 rand in, but we're still paying our suppliers 300,000 and there's a net outflow. So what if our overdraft facility was 400,000 and in month nine we just blew the overdraft? We might now be subject to having to meet some strenuous requirements from the bank in order to come up with the cash to settle uh, the overdraft and shareholders might be scrambling to get some cash to put it into the business. But effectively, we've run out of our business cash reserves and we might say the business has gone bankrupt. Now let's, let's kind of pause this for a moment and by pause I mean let the sales stop growing and go back to a steady state and you'll notice how at least here the inflows and the outflows are the same so our cash doesn't change but in month 11 what starts to happen is the cash flows these increased sales from back here start to catch up with us and you'll see here 400,000 worth of inflows against 300,000 outflows and our cash starts to improve and in month 12 again we start to improve our cash flows 500,000 inflows versus 300,000 outflows and very quickly our cash is starting to return to a number that is a little less painful so if we were to look back in hindsight at these numbers we might say with some things that we can do to avoid blowing our overdraft and specifically we would want to get our customers to pay us sooner so that's going to pick and pay and saying can you pay us on 60 days rather than 90 days now I recognize that that's a very difficult conversation and that's a whole new area of, of customer negotiations but for now just recognize that your customers paying you sooner will definitely help this scenario and the other option here is of course to go to our suppliers, these cash outflows here, and ask them if we could pay them later. So that perhaps down here when these large cash flows are flowing out, say 240,000 in month eight, what if this cash was delayed to the next month? That would certainly help the business. So what comes out of this? are some rules that we can follow to help us understand our working capital. So let's step through these lines one by one. We'll start with the debtors. 
and we're going to use some very simple numbers to explain this. So in year one, we're saying that there's a thousand rands worth of debtors on the balance sheet. And when we come back a year later and measure this, there's 2,000 rands. So clearly the debtors has gone up and that's represented by an up arrow. And if your debtors has gone up, it means your customers are taking longer to pay you and therefore your cash has gone down by a thousand, which is the difference between these two annual numbers. And I'm using a down arrow here just to represent cash outflow. The inventory or the stock on the shelf works the same way as debtors. An increase in stock from one year to the next implies that we bought more stock from our suppliers and therefore the cash outflow to buy that stock is negative and we have this down arrow. So debtors and inventory are the same. If they are going up, your cash is going down. With creditors, it works the other way around. Of course, these are the suppliers we are paying money to. And if our creditors has gone up, it means we are delaying the payment to our suppliers. And if we delay payment to our suppliers, it means the cash stays in our bank account and hence this up arrow. So these rules work in what is referred to as vice versa obviously the opposite way around depending on how the numbers change from one year to the next. So it's important that you understand that when you go back and do the all-star numbers. So that's next on our agenda. We're going to do the all-star cash flow. So far we've completed two years of income statements and balance sheets. We've covered some theory of cash flow. So I'm going to suggest to you that go and look up the grid for the cash flow for all star see if you can complete that muddle your way through it and in the next video what we're going to do is i'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of doing that cash flow statement we'll see you in the next video